the soot-covered baby of Withensy, by request of the family of Rose Pointer, from whose mind I write this poem. Friday the 24th of August 1942 was a day Withensy came well to rue, a day that the townsfolk did not forget, a day full of horror and regret. My beloved Walter was on rare home leave, and as he was about to depart to the front line soon, I did worry and grieve. To North Africa to fight he was to go, my man. I would carry on as only a wife truly can. The air raid siren sounded, but there was nothing to see. We all felt as safe as could be. After all, Hull was the target of the air raids. Folk there could feel truly afraid. The packed evening business train from Hull pulled in. The town was crowded and there was an almighty din as the siren sounded again, so loud. Could not be ignored now and the anxious crowd ran for shelter and took fright, tried to reach safety with all their might. The planes could now be heard in the skies and bullets flew like swarms of flies. The bombs they fell transforming Queen Street into hell. A mother from Hull who had come to stay from danger and bombing to get away. She sheltered with her four children and a niece in the doorway of a shoe shop like frightened geese. Huddled together, full of terror, they had made a tragic error. They hoped to save themselves on that dreadful day, but they a terrible high price did pay. Her baby daughter was tiny in a pram so strong, having her in this was not wrong. The bombs of hate fell on the shops and street. The running and hiding was swift and fleet. We in our lovely happy town where there is no war cannot imagine the horror there was these folks for. Many shops were hit, including this one, and death that day was handed out in an indiscriminate way. Innocent folks, doing no one any harm at all, were amongst those who did fall. The family had hoped to save themselves that day, but I am very sad to say they died with a direct hit, and a huge pothole like a pit was created in the road, where the baby's pram was blowed. It laid upside down in the crater deep, but this in safety did the baby keep. Bombs and bullets had their say on this the most horrendous of days. After it was all over out, Walter went to offer help. He was bent. He was amongst the very first to appear, probably because we lived so near. There was devastation and death all around. Misery and screaming did abound. He came back with a baby that was black. She needed a wash and soap and water we did not lack. She soon turned pink as we removed the dirt. She was covered in soot, but she was not hurt. She had been protected by her pram, which had taken force as great as a battering ram. I had my Betty with me, but ran to a neighbour to see if I could use her bottle to feed this tiny baby girl so full of need. She had been staying for safety in a caravan, but fate in Withensy dealt her a hard blow, as hard as it can. The baby so sweet was brought up in hell of life's vagaries I did mull. Over the years I heard of the little girl as she grew up and her life did unfurl. She came occasionally to Winsley Beach and I watched her happy just out of my reach. In 1989, the local paper carried the story one day and the story of the black baby resurfaced as it may. My baby had grown up and had her own. I was a grandma and had nothing about which to moan. I was so surprised to receive a lovely bunch of roses red and to be visited by the baby who I had washed and fed. Now a grown-up happy adult so fine, when I met her again the pleasure was mine. She wanted to thank me for, for my efforts for her. I only did what I should. I did demur. 